All right, guys. So here we go with the tutorial you asked for. We're running an Apple M1 Max, 64 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of storage on macOS Ventura 13.4. To use this game porting toolkit, you don't actually need to be on macOS Sonoma, but it's supposed to run better on macOS Sonoma. So the first thing we need to do is get on macOS Sonoma. So let's go to settings, general, software updates. My personal Apple ID is connected to a developer account. So I have more options than you might see here. You probably just see automatic updates. If you click here on the little eye icon, you'll see that I have an option to choose which beta I want to use. Um, we don't want the developer beta or public beta for Ventura. What we actually want is the Mac OS Sonoma developer beta. So we're going to click that one. We're going to hit done. It's going to load. Okay, so now we have the option to download. This is the Mac OS 14 beta. It's 5.83 gigs. Let's hit upgrade now. Agree. Password. Now that it's done, we can hit upgrade now. Okay, so now we're in. We are on Sonoma 14. Point zero beta. The next step is to get those instructions and get the game porting toolkit working. So in case you were wondering, this is where I picked up the tutorial from how I did it. Um, all we need is his link to the Apple Gaming Wiki. I will add it to the description down below. Better Snap Tool is a really good app that lets you have basically the same functionality that Windows gives you, where you can snap Windows left, right, corner, etc. Let's get started. We're just going to copy and paste a couple commands into the terminal window. Okay, so there's also a few um, applications we need to download. It says requirements. Sonoma Beta it says you could use Mac OS Ventura. We need to visit the Apple Developer Download site. Okay, so now we're going to need to download a few things. We're going to need to download the command line tools. So the next thing we need from this website is the game porting toolkit. Okay, so let's install and mount these. Start with the command line. Let's run this installation. Now game porting toolkit. Agree and it should mount. It's not an installation, it just needs to be mounted. So it just has to show up here on the desktop. And let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install Homebrew. So literally just copy this first line, paste it, and run it. It says type A and press return to agree. So these commands have to be within the x86 64 shell. So we're just entering that as it says there. Yeah, I could try to explain everything, but I'm not going to. I'm just showing you what you have to do. This is assuming you don't already have homebrew to the latest update. So we should have installed homebrew. The next thing to do is set the path. Don't mind that. If you noticed when I messed up up there, it said quote because I erased the letter or number 
And so I made an error and so it said, quote, if you're doing the commands correctly, you won't see anything unless there's an actual output to that command that you put in. Okay, here it says when you paste this, it should say this. And it does user local bin brew. If it doesn't print this, for example, if it didn't show user local, then you would use this command. Next, let's build Apple tap. We're going to copy this. So this part is going to take about an hour, maybe longer. Uh, it says it there, one hour to complete, depending on the speed of your Mac. Might be quicker if you have a more powerful Mac, I don't know. This is an M1 Max. So you're just going to see a whole bunch of compiling. If during the installation you see the error, game porting toolkit unknown or unsupported, just use the command right below it, brew update brew install Apple, Apple gaming porting toolkit. In this next part, we're using the script to copy the game porting toolkit library directory into the wine library directory. Remember, this isn't going to work unless you mounted the game porting toolkit DMG. Next, just paste the next command so we can copy the porting toolkit DMG into the user local bin. So this part is kind of important. This is kind of like having a bottle in crossover. By that I mean it's like a container where your applications and games will sit. So just make sure whatever you name your prefix, that's where you're installing your applications and your games or else this won't work correctly. The default one here is called my game prefix. So that's the folder where everything's going to be in for that bottle. So when you run this command, it's going to tell you to configure wine. You want to pick Windows 10 and then hit apply and OK. All right, now we're going to install Steam. In order to do that, you need to click the download link. Once it downloads to your download folder, you can run the install Steam command. Just follow the prompts, click Next, and install Steam. You'll see it'll update. This next command will run Steam. I had some issues with my capture card, so I had to put it on a second monitor for it to work. So I'm going to transition to that. So if you see me going back and forth, that's why. If for any reason the login screen is all black, just run this command and it'll relaunch and you'll be able to log into Steam. Since I was having issues with capturing, I don't have an example of the black screen. So something I didn't do before was run this command here and it allows you to make Wine think that it's a more recent version of Windows. I tried to record just one screen, but I kept breaking everything. So let's try this. So we're going to use the standard launcher to run Steam, right? So copy, command V, I always hit the right button so that it's not highlighted anymore because otherwise I get errors. I hit enter and you can't see it, it's on my other screen, but it's, it's launching. You can see it here on the dock. So, um, library. We're going to go to cyberpunk 2077. We're going to hit play. This is one of three ways that you can launch the game. So you're going to see that it's launching all the required uh, distributables. 
and installing them. A part of me wants to just screen mirror, so let me screen mirror and see if that affects the video. Oh, okay, it's working. We'll make it full screen once it loads. Just fast forwarding through this because I forgot to hit spacebar. I'm going to go in the settings and show you what settings I used, but I'm going to also fast forward it because it's very boring. Um, my capture card only allowed me to do 1080p, so that's why the limit is 1080p, but the rest is on ultra. So the good thing about this game is that when you launch the Steam application, you can just hit play and it'll start. And I don't know why it is, but I've been watching a few videos on a YouTube and anything that's uh, Apple M2 does not run well. I know it says 29 frames per second with the M1 Max, but I've gotten a lot higher. Don't worry, I'm going to do actual gameplay so we can see what that looks like. But I'm on Ultra, so 30 frames on Ultra for a game that is narrative. I think that's more than enough. Until you start having to shoot people. So we're doing pretty good. Linus is wrong. Linus is very wrong. I mean, he had an M2. He didn't even bother to try M1. I don't blame him. Got it. You like the sound of your voice, don't you? What's that drifter? What do you want about? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Best out. doing some driving around still in the 40s all right so yeah that's the easiest way you just hit play if the game's supported some games won't just run by hitting play so there's other ways to launch it um, so this way is gonna have the hood every time if you don't want the hood uh, I believe the script for playing without the hood is down here under commands standard launching launching without HUD and launching wine with e-sync disabled uh, also you can make some changes to the wine configuration by running this command in the terminal let's let's run cyberpunk again we're gonna remove the HUD okay so if you want to launch manually, you can use this command, this command, and I'm not sure what eSync disabled does. But if you don't want the HUD, we'll click this, copy, we'll paste, right? And then what we want to do is change the directory. This is, this is saying using the porting toolkit with no HUD, go to directory my, well, the bottle, which is also a directory, my game prefix, and then where in that bottle it is. For example, let's go to go home my game prefix, drive C, program files, um, I believe it's Steam, Steam apps, common. And here are your Steam games. So if we want to play Cyberpunk, we need to know what directory it is. 
I'm not sure which executable it is. I think it's this one. So we're going to click get info. And we're going to go here. We're going to copy path name. And then let's make some space here. So I'm going to add a little slash there. And let's click rename here. Oops. Don't want that. I'm going to click rename. We're going to copy this executable. And we're going to paste it here. Okay, so now what we want is everything up to x86. We want all of this. Notice how there's this quotation mark. You want to make sure that you highlight after that quotation mark all the way to this slash. And then we're going to paste. Uh, you can, you'll see that the forward slash, backslash, they're different sometimes, but I don't think it matters. So let's just see if it works. I usually change them so they're all the same. They're all like this one. But let's see. I, I haven't tried this. Let's open a new terminal. And let's paste that command. And the game launched. Can't see it because it's on the second screen, but I'll move it as soon as it loads. And now we have no HUD. I don't know what frames it's playing at, but it's very smooth. I mean, we're not in the city. The city would be a better place for benchmarks and stuff. Remind me, I'm playing with the uh, Waz right now. Anyways, that's that. It's the second way that you can run the game. No HUD through command line. So let's quit the game. And now that I put it on uh, window two, it should open up automatically. So the third way to make games launch, and this is probably going to be your easiest bet, um, is we're going to use Automator. So let's open Automator. And it says, uh, can't even read it. Okay, so application, choose, second column, select run shortcut. In the second column, select run shell script. Let's scroll down to R run shell script okay and then here we're going to paste the command that we want to auto run so for instance we're going to copy the steam link okay and then i believe you can just hit run, but I don't want to hit run. I want to save it. Hit. Yeah, file, save, call it steam. And we'll put it on the desktop. And then we can close this for now. We'll close all of these. Let me move that icon. So now we have Steam. Also, it says you can 
add um, an image. How do you do that? You go to get info and you drag the image here. Let's see. Image to downloads, that's fine. Okay, Let's, is this open? We're gonna click get info. It's here. And then what we want to do is open finder, go to downloads. Okay, under downloads, it's here, Steam logo transparent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag and drop it. You need to drop it right here, where when you see the little green plus, that means you're there. You let go, and there you go. You can do that for any application, any file. You just drag and drop right up here, and that image will be replaced. Now I can just double click Steam, and in theory, it should launch Steam. I know you can't see my dock, but it's launching. And now you have the wine version of Steam. Um, you can make a shortcut like that for just about any game 